Hey guys, it's Andrew with GY6 Vids. Got a cool review for you today, very rare. This is the Arsenal Firearm Strike One Pistol. Some of you guys might have heard about it. Uh, it's got very bold claims all over the internet, as you can see around me. I'm kind of skeptical. Uh, sun's just coming up, so we'll be able to run this gun all day long, break her in, uh, put a couple hundred rounds through it, clean her up, do some accuracy tests, pit it against the Glock, and we'll see what happens. The Arsenal Firearm Strike 1 pistol came on the scene in 2012, and it's most notorious for its extremely low bore axis. Coming in at only 12 millimeters or .47 inches, it is said to be the lowest bore axis on any semi-automatic pistol in history. Due to the Strike 1's extremely high ammunition feed level, it's able to support a rampless barrel, allowing for direct feeding of any type of ammunition without any problems. As you can see in these clips, the barrel on the Strike 1 does not tilt and dip down like you'd see in other firearms. It is an internally rail-guided barrel along with a locking block, which means it's an inline system with the slide, allowing for faster lockup times, faster follow-up shots, and also extreme control under rapid-fire situations. In short, it allows you to get your barrel back on target faster. Though it's clear Arsenal firearms do not skimp on the internal functions of this firearm, they also took the time to build this up ergonomically as well. Though I'm not a huge fan of the 3D design on the grip of the gun, I will say this is probably one of the most comfortable pistols I've had a chance to put my hands around. I think in large part it has to do with the extremely low bore axis, the amazing balance, and the beaver tail in the firearm. Now I can't speak for everyone, but I truly feel in charge and in control of this gun. The Strike 1 pistol has the ability to go either left or right handed magazine release, or completely ambidextrous. Another great feature of the Strike 1 pistol that most companies overlook is a built-in flared magwell for faster speed reloads and mag exchanges. Though I do like the sights of the Strike 1 pistol, I have an issue with the fact the rear sights are attached to the back plate of the gun. It makes it a bit tough to customize your sights. Though there's only a few things I don't like about the Strike 1 pistol, one of which is the fact that the trigger assembly came marred up from the factory brand new in the box. Though the marred up trigger and poor quality laser engravings of the logos don't affect performance, it's not what us gun guys like to see. I wanted to go over real fast how to install your ambidextrous magazine release that comes with your gun. It's very simple, just want to push back on this indent and then you're going to want to push your magazine release all the way through the gun. After you've done that, just reverse the process and reinstall your ambidextrous magazine release. The trigger of the Strike 1 pistol right out of the box is actually very nice. It has a nice smooth crisp break, but there's only one issue, and that is the sponginess on the back side of the trigger. It doesn't completely depress and stay put. It has a little bit of wiggle room, as you can see here in this video. I think the sponginess in this trigger comes from the patented safety trigger the Strike 1 has. Rather than being a two-part trigger like most guns nowadays, the safety is actually enclosed in the external housing, causing that little bit of sponginess. Let's go over quickly how to break down the Strike 1 pistol. Release your magazine, depress trigger, pull back slightly on the slide, pushing in the indent. On the back side, you're going to pull out the pin does not come free, it actually stays in the frame of the gun, which is nice. Push forward on the slide, slide will come free. You now can take from your slide assembly the locking block, your spring, and then your barrel. And there you have it, you're completely broken down and ready for cleaning. In order to reassemble, all you have to do is reverse your steps. The nice thing about the slide assembly in this gun is the spring doesn't come flying off when you try to reassemble it. You can hold it at whatever angle you want and it slides right into place.
Hmm. It's weird. After shooting the Strike One, I mean, the gun, this is a, one of my competition Glocks that you like to use when I'm doing competition shooting. Uh, and I'm used to it. I mean, I've shot this thing thousands of times. And <laughs> uh, I started shooting first with the Strike One and quickly began to see what the fuss is all about. Um, <laughs> what can I say? I started to flinch with this gun because the trigger even though I like this trigger, it still it doesn't have the same type of feel to it on the on the tip of your, or the pad of your finger, I should say. It's kind of hard to explain. Uh, you kind of have to get behind one of the strike ones to really understand what I'm saying. But from my point of view, uh, it's like shooting a 1911 compared to shooting a Glock. Uh, Glocks obviously are reliable as all hell. I love Glocks. I always will like Glocks. Uh, I'm not a Glock fanboy by any means but I do understand the benefit of what a Glock offers. Most likely start using and probably getting more mags for the Strike 1 and start using that in competition. Uh, this is a Glock 22 Gen 3 and I have a Lone Wolf aftermarket conversion barrel converting it over to 9mm. Um, and I have the Royal Arms aftermarket trigger in this Glock so it's not just an original Glock trigger. I mean, majority of anybody who runs a Glock will update their trigger with a uh, competition trigger, especially if they're doing competitions. Um, but even with this Royal Arms trigger, which I like, strike one. <laughs> well, strike one against the Glock, I guess, because I would pick the strike one to practice more with, and that's what I'm going to do. Wow. Uh, my point of view, this is very impressive so far. Let's get into some high speed uh, bench rested and let's see if the flinching is because of me standing here and shooting and just kind of going from one gun to another really quick or if it's actually recoiling less. So let's convert over to that and see what it looks like on the bench in high speed. All right, so after breaking in the Strike One pistol, put a couple hundred rounds through it, I like what I see. The low bore axis on this gun makes it very 1911-ish. Um, this is the best way I can put it. But other than that, I wanted to try to wrap my brain around what's causing this to feel so good. I mean, it's it's smooth, it's efficient. Um, it, it's very, like I said, 1911 reminiscent to me. I, I just feel like I'm shooting at that smooth, elegant firing that you get from a 1911. The trigger on this gun is very smooth. Uh, the reset's crisp and the brake is crisp, but there's a little sponginess at the end of the brake. So as the gun goes off and as that trigger is depressed, the trigger still has a little travel to the back of the gun, which in some cases, and in my case, I can feel myself almost flinching uh, because I want to have good follow through with my trigger pull. And uh, trigger control is really important with accuracy, especially during competition when you're aiming at a very small target and you want to have quick follow-up shots. You want to depress that trigger all the way to the back of the gun, control your reset, and then let it go off again. With this one, there's a little sponginess after it breaks. Not a lot, but enough to notice. Uh, so be wary of that when you're buying the gun. You're going to see that, but you just got to train and get used to it. But that being said, already broke the gun in. I want to make sure to clean out this barrel. Uh, it's got a couple hundred rounds through it. I want to make sure the barrel's clean before we do accuracy testing on the silhouette target, uh, on a sandbag. We're gonna clean this. I don't wanna thoroughly clean everything. I don't wanna like get all nitty gritty and get into the slide too much. We'll spray a little bit of breakthrough clean solvent inside, run around a little bit, clean it slightly, just surface clean. And then we're gonna run a pull through through this barrel. After doing the pull through, I'm gonna take a little bit of breakthrough clean's battle born grease and put it on all the moving sections of the slide and near the barrel where it locks up. That way we have proficiency while we're shooting and don't have any malfunctions. We're using breakthrough clean's new cleaning kits. This is our pistol cleaning kit. Um, yes, I am giving a little shout out to them. They are one of my sponsors and they make great stuff. I'm always using their, their solvents, their cleaners, their lubricants, their grease. Uh, hasn't failed me yet and if anything, it's made a lot of the roughest guns feel smooth. So yes, this is a shout out to them. You gotta go check out their cleaning kits on their website, BreakthroughClean.com. All right, so we got a controlled setting right here. We have the sandbag. I'm gonna bench rest my hand over top of it, take shots down on target. We'll be able to see it in high speed to judge how much more muzzle climb comes out of the Glock than it does the Strike One pistol. Uh, due to the low, extremely, I think the lowest bore axis uh, in a pistol to date, uh, it should have a tremendous difference. Um, I'm going to hold the same grip, 
squeeze the same way I squeeze the triggers, uh, take my time, and we'll be able to judge it and give you guys a first person perspective to see the difference. All right, let's take a look. So as you can see in this high speed footage, it is very shocking to see that both guns are traveling almost identical to each other, even though the Strike 1 has a much lower bore axis than the Glock. I think the biggest difference will be here in a second when I'm doing it offhand. So as you can tell in this high speed side by side, the muzzle travel between the Glock and the Strike 1 pistol are almost spot on identical. Though the return to target and lock up slightly faster with the Strike 1 pistol, it's not as dramatic as I'd hoped to see. Though I did feel more comfortable with the Strike 1 on the range, and I did like its trigger even better. I think I found one of my new favorite pistols. After spending the entire day with the Strike 1 pistol, I will say I am now a fan and I will be running this gun, that's for sure. But can I stand by Arsenal Firearms statements of saying it's the fastest, most accurate, most controllable pistol in the world's market right now? I cannot say that, nor will I confirm or agree with it. I did have two malfunctions while doing this accuracy shooting on the range, as you can see here. One malfunction right here. Uh, we're having a failure to feed. All right, there's 10. Though I can't stand by Arsenal Firearms claims about this gun being the best in the world's market, I will say that this gun is definitely a runner for one of the best guns on the market. I think the only thing left this gun has to prove is longevity over the years. Alright guys, this is Andrew with GY6 Vids and this has been the Arsenal Firearms Strike One Pistol. It's very, very hard to get a hold of. Uh, Arsenal Firearms is in huge demand right now. They have the double barrel 1911 they are, have designed. It's going to be the new James Bond movie. But this is the Strike One. This is one of their go-tos. And it's, um, I'm going to give it two thumbs up. I was scared that it might suck. <laughs> because they've claimed so many things online about the firearm and I was skeptical at first because a lot of the time when I hear these things I instantly think okay they're covering something up but after testing after shooting it all day breaking this bad boy in and running this gun I am thoroughly impressed I like the trigger the only cons I can see are the slight sponginess after it breaks and other than that I can't find any other faults when you're taking shots on a, with a firearm, you want to make sure to aim in the same spot. So I'm aiming dead center every time. Even though it was hitting off target, it's not the gun, it's just the way I'm shooting. So the gun is accurate, it's hitting consistently in this spot. This gun is very hard to get a hold of, but if you guys are interested in buying one, uh, I happen to get a hold of a friend down here in Texas. His name is Derek, and he's from Battleground Firearms. Uh, I went by, they actually happened to have one. I picked one up because I've been wanting to do a review for a while. Uh, very good price. I think it's running right around $1,000. Um, yeah, it's higher than your Glocks, obviously, but it's also something you don't have to put an aftermarket trigger in um, or barrels or anything. Other things just set. So if you guys want one, make sure you hit up Derek. You can actually, I think his email, just to bug him. Go bug him. Derek at battlegroundfirearms.com. Uh, send them some emails, ask them if they have any in stock. You can pick them up from him and he can send it to your FFL locally. Um, these are very hard to get a hold of, so that the fact that they have them in stock is huge. So I hope you appreciate it all. If you really like this video, please click the thumbs up button. It helps me let me know that you guys like this stuff. It kind of, kind of directs where my videos go in the near future. Uh, but I hope you appreciate it. Hope you like the new slow-mo. Sometimes when I post a video that's an archive video that I haven't posted because I filmed them maybe a year or two years ago, and they won't have slow-mo in it. So if you see a video that I post, it's probably, and it doesn't have slow-mo in it or high speed in it, it's probably because it's an archive video I've filmed a year or two years ago. I save some videos because if I'm in the middle of a production, like doing this video, and I'm about to miss a week or two weeks, I edit one of my old videos and post it for you guys so at least you have something to chew on and have fun with. Um, but a lot of the stuff I post in between good productions are some of my old flicks. If you don't see high speed, I apologize. And if someone rags on those videos for not having high speed, let them know what the situation is. They're my filler videos, so you still get some entertainment, but they're not my newest production. Um, hope you enjoyed this, guys. Sun's going down. This is Andrew with GY6 Vids, and this has been the Arsenal Firearms Strike One Pistol. I'll see you next week.
break-in period of the Strike One pistol. I can definitely picking birds. See if Andrew from GY6 Vids can shoot a bird out of the air with the Strike One pistol in high speed. Big. Oh no. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Big blue bear bleeds blue blood. Big blue bear bleeds blue blood. Humana, humana, humana. <laughs> la 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 la